Well, why is Remembrance Day important to you? Uh, a couple of reasons. One, um, whenever I go to the, the ceremonies, I mean, yes, we're losing vets um, as they as they pass away because it's, you know, they're getting up there in age. There's not many of them left. But I also find that the attendance and the audience is also getting less and less. And that's a problem for me. Um, I think we need to keep the education going. We need to keep this conversation going. We need to... Um, we need to teach the young kids why we have what we have, because I think so many of us take advantage or take it for, for granted what we have. They don't realize what we lost a hundred years ago with, you know, with between world war one and two. Um, <clears throat> so I just, I really want to keep that alive and I really want to keep the conversation going so that that doesn't get lost because you know, when I was a kid in school, we always had a vet come to the school and do a talk. That doesn't happen anymore because there's just not enough vets around. Mm -hmm. So we need to kind of we, we need to keep talking about it. We need to keep letting the kids know what's going on. Um, I also have a brother that was in the military and I lost him a number of years ago. And it's just a. I guess just the military and the and remembrance is all just it's close to my heart for for all those reasons. And we really need to keep keep the memory alive of why we have what we have. So there are many things that we can do for Remembrance Day, like wearing mm -hmm. a poppy, writing a story, uh, what you did, coordinating, I don't know how many volunteers to cover the clock tower with thousands of poppies. What inspired you to express your sentiments in such a magnanimous way? Well, I had seen it done in other cities across the world. And um, I had heard about Uxbridge doing it last year. So I contacted them and I said, what do we do to, to bring that to Stouffville? And they gave me uh, they gave me the kind of the head start as to how to get it going. And so last November, the week after Remembrance Day, I put a call out to, on my, I have a Facebook group, the Stouffville Bulletin. And um, I put a call out there and I said, let's see if we can get 2000 poppies. And the number of volunteers that came through is incredible. We ended up with over 5,600 poppies. Wow. And how many volunteers? Oh, um, I'd say 50 to 60. Incredible. And they've been, they've been knitting and crocheting all winter. So they started buying, well, actually, there was a shortage of red yarn. <laughs> Nobody could find red yarn. So we, you know, we did what we could to, if we found it, we grabbed it. <clears throat> so yeah, people have been knitting and crocheting since last November and they came through big, a lot better than, I shouldn't say better, a lot, a lot more poppies than I expected and hoped for. And we now have permission from the town to expand it next year. So I'm thrilled with that. If someone is a relative of a Hollywood celebrity, they feel a certain pride and honor how do you think relatives of veterans should feel? I would hope they do feel the pride and honor because that's what this display is for. And every time I go by and there's people there, I've left a container of poppies there for people to, if they want to come by and, and add a poppy to the display. And I've met a number of people there and I've told them, I said, you know, there's the, there's the container, feel free to put one up and, and they do. And, the emotions that I see from people when they put a poppy up and they just stand back and they just look in, uh, in awe at the whole display. It's amazing. And it's so heartwarming. I just like, I get teary eyed every time there's somebody there doing that because it's, it's just so meaningful and it, and it gives people a way also to express their feelings of Remembrance Day and it gives them something to, to do a way for them to contribute. So if they, you know, they can go and put a, a, a poppy on the display and I think it's just a, a nice way that they can feel that they've contributed. And they have, because the display just keeps getting better and better every poppy that goes on. How do you feel when you look at that clock tower full of poppies? Oh, I, my heart just bursts. It's just amazing to me that so many people felt what I felt and wanted to contribute to this, to this project. And to see it when it's with all four sides covered, 
is amazing. And I see people when I'm there and, and, you know, they'll be looking at it and I'll say, you know, all four sides are done because they're thinking they're looking at just the front and it's just the front that's got, got the, the poppies on it. And I said, no, all four. I said, the whole clock tower is wrapped in poppies and they're just, they're in awe. And it just, it, it, it makes me so happy to see the response that people have for it and to see how they feel about it because they feel a lot of the people that go there, they really feel something and they're very appreciative of having it there. And that's what it's for. What do you think we could learn from those who served in the armed forces? Oh my gosh, there's so much we can learn. And there's just so much that the general population doesn't know. And, you know, you you, you talk to people and they say, oh yeah, the war was a hundred years ago or it was, you know, 80 years ago or whatever it was. They don't realize that there's wars going on all around the world and at like still there are still wars going on but you know we're living here in Stouffville in our comfortable homes and you know if we don't listen to the news then the wars aren't happening but they are happening and people are living through hell and you know you look at all we can do is look at movies and some of the movies that we have now that are fairly realistic it's hard to watch and it's hard to fathom that the men in the trenches really lived through those those times. And people say, well, why didn't they just leave? Why didn't they just quit? Why didn't they climb out of the tent trenches? And I, you don't get it. There was no option. You could not leave. You could not climb out of the, the climb out of the trenches. You could not just walk away or you'd be you'd be shot and killed by, you know, as soon as you step out of the, the trenches, you're done. And people, I think, just don't realize that. They just figure, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just get up and walk away. No, you can't. And so I think we really need to, people need to understand what what happened and how it happened and how those guys lived when they were at war. And the other thing is the sacrifices that people at home that did not go to war, the sacrifices they made the rationing of goods and the, you know, the women that stayed behind and, and worked in, in uh, factories, making things, making supplies for, uh, for the, for the soldiers that they would, we would send them overseas or to wherever they, they needed them. So the sacrifices were, were many. It wasn't, it wasn't the men in the trenches only. It was the families that suffered here waiting for the news getting the news that they've lost their loved ones and then having to live with that and having to suffer the rest of their lives knowing what happened to their loved one and or or not knowing what happened to their loved one because they never came home and they you know they they may have never been found so there's there's a lot of conversation to go on and we just really need to keep it happening and we people need to understand what our military does now you know we're in peacetime so yeah we don't need any soldiers we don't need any warriors yeah we do <clears throat> and they're constantly training and they're constantly working hard and hopefully we do never need them but they're there if we do it seems like um those who fought in the war were tougher people than we are do you want to comment i think on i think in a way they they were um but it's also because they didn't have a choice. A lot of these guys were, you know, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. And they didn't have a choice. You you had to grow up pretty fast because all of a sudden, you know, you weren't going off to university. You were going overseas and it's your life is on the line. And I think they were tougher, not by not so much by choice, but because they had to. There was no there was no choice. They had to do that. They had to grow up and they had to be tough right off the bat. Those who went to war and then came back, I was told that many were different people when they came back. Mm -hmm. Do you know? You hear that a lot. And you hear that they they would never talk about it. Because there's nobody back home that could understand or would or could sit and listen to the horror stories which is why the legions back then were so important because they could go to the legions and they could share their stories with fellow soldiers and they would get it they had somebody to talk to 
And I think the families didn't really, they, they, they couldn't understand the horrors that these, these men saw when they were at war. And it goes on today, you know, you, you see the horrors, well, well, we don't see them, but you hear of the horror, the, the horrors going on in, in the Ukraine and, you know, in the Middle East where there's, there's always fighting. We just don't understand how bad it is. And I think the families back then, they didn't understand how bad it was and they couldn't understand and they, they couldn't listen to the, the, the men when they came back because it was too hard to listen to. And also, again, because, you know, the men could come back and talk to their families, but the families just didn't get it. Once they were together and they could talk amongst themselves, that's, I think, where they they almost got a, it was a form of therapy, I think. They could talk amongst themselves and they, and they could share their thoughts and with someone who truly understood what it was like. When we see a war veteran, what sentiments do you think we should have toward them? Gratitude, um, pride, um, thanks. We 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 need to show them so much gratitude, so much respect for what they did, and that they came home and they survived all this time. Can you tell us about uh, their relationships with loved ones being separated? That would be that would be pretty brutal. And and I, like I've seen letters, you know, you go to the museum or you know you you, you hear of, of families that had relatives that were overseas, and you see the letters that would go back and forth, and you hear stories of somebody who saved the letters all these years, and you know they pass away and. and the, kids or the grandkids find them buried in a trunk where they're the communication going back and forth between them. I think, again, the people here just couldn't quite understand what was going on over overseas. And the guys couldn't really talk about it because they wouldn't be allowed to send back a lot of the details as to what was happening and where they were. So again, it was, you know, the communication I think was tough. You mentioned that um, students need to know more about what mm-hmm. happened. What do you think the schools can do to make sure that students are educated? I would love to see this put into their curriculum somehow. <clears throat> I don't know what it, how much or if any Remembrance Day um, studies are in their curriculum. I had wanted to get some some schools involved for, for this project. But I just kind of ran out of time because I thought, you know, with this, when September came and, and the kids were going back to school for their first time after COVID, I thought it was going to be too hectic for the for the schools to to deal with this project as well. But I did I did actually uh, manage to speak to one school, uh, a teacher from one of the schools here in town, and she did get her school on board, and they did a lot of poppies. They made some uh, uh, paper ones, they painted them, they drew them. And they're on display because they're paper. We couldn't put them on the clock tower display, but I have two stores here in town with their windows decorated for remember <clears throat> for Remembrance Day, Lindy's Floral Boutique and Shell Lumber. So the kids, uh, the poppies that all the kids made are in those two store windows. Great. Is there any other message you would like to share with us regarding Remembrance Day, the clock tower? Uh, my big message is get out to their services on, on Friday, November the 11th, every year. You know, you can go there and think, well, you know, it's cold and rainy. We, you know, I don't want to stand out there in the cold and rain. Well, let's think about what those guys lived through in the wars. They had no choice. They were in the trenches full of disease and rats and who knows what. They couldn't get out of the trenches because they were cold or wet. They had to live in there. So you know what? I think for 15 minutes, we can stand out in the cold or the rain or whatever's happening on Friday the, or, on, or on November 11th every year to pay uh, homage to them, to show them the, the gratitude, the pride, the honor that they deserve. Because of their sacrifice, 
What do we have now? We have freedom <clears throat> and we have democracy and we have uh, the, the we, we can vote in our government. We can we can speak freely. We don't have to be afraid of of speaking against our government, you know, <laughs> without getting stupid. I mean, uh, the big thing I I think is is freedom, and people don't realize what that really means. I think if something happened and our freedom was taken away, it would be a huge wake up call. And again, that that's part of the message that we, we need to get people to understand that we have this now because a hundred years ago, millions of people died for it. So don't screw it up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Susan, for joining us today at Bullet Point News. I'm happy to help. Thank you for having me. Thank you.